Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge, that is why we are here every day on The Bright Side helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are your go-to source for clarity and simplicity when it comes to the world of nutrition and health and wellness, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, if you have a health challenge that seems like there's just no solution, a health conundrum that has no solvable end, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. Try to call in early. If you want to purchase any of our Longevity products, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can order products right off the website. You can also call 866-735-2470 and order products or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. Call 866-735-2470. Start a Longevity business. Help change the world and make money at the same time. If you're one of those folks that wants to earn a living, that understands the importance of money, but doesn't want to doesn't want to sacrifice your morals or your ethics, wants to make a difference, wants to be helpful in the world and make money at the same time. Longevity gives you a, a unique and singular platform to do that. I don't know of any other business that can do it as effectively, with as in a, a pretty much a, a prepackaged, systematic way. It's so simple to do. You do, uh, you take the products yourself, you feel better, you tell people about them. That's pretty much it. Everything is, is, everything is provided for you. Anyway, you call 866-735-2470. They can give you the, the 411. And also, if you're interested in uh, checking out some super high-end skin health products, head over to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And oh yeah, I forgot to tell you about our bone broth protein that's formulated by uh, Jordan Rubin, he's going to be on the program talking about it next uh, two days on Wednesday. And uh, I'm selling it at brightsidehealth.com, brightsidehealth.com. Okay, I want to go back to talking about the ketogenic diet. We started talking about that, oh gosh, probably two months ago, and then we digressed a little into the steroid hormones, which are upregulated by the ketogenic diet. The ketogenic diet is just a feel-good diet. The steroid hormones are our growth and thrival and stress management hormones. They're key players in how, how fast we break down or how well we're going to live and age. And the ketogenic diet is a incredibly effective way to upregulate your good steroid hormones, the PPD hormones. The ketogenic diet's been around for over a hundred years. Well, technically it's been around for over a hundred years. I mean, uh, we science, started studying it scientifically around the turn of the century, around the late 19th century, but it's been around for a really long time, just not called the ketogenic diet, of course. I've been talking about it since I first heard about it in pharmacy school. In pharmacy school, we learn about the ketogenic diet as a anti-seizure protocol. And I was always, as a pharmacy student, I never really, it never really made sense to me, the whole drug mentality. I know I was in pharmacy school learning about drugs and medicines, and I love the chemistry side of it, but it just never made sense to me how when the body's sick, you put a poison in it. it. 
so whenever I heard things like uh, vitamins for for blindness, vitamin A for blindness, that's something we talked about a lot in pharmacy school, vitamin A for the eyes, for night vision. We heard about vitamin C for blood pressure, vitamin C for the cardiovascular system, zinc for the immune system, and probiotics for the digestive system, and selenium as an anti-cancer agent. We learn all these things in pharmacy school. It's like... It just, I, I had a trouble wrapping my mind over why we were using drugs and we had all these other strategies, all these other logical ideas. And we also learn in pharmacy school about diseases as nutritional deficiencies. So every time, every time I heard some, uh, another piece another piece of information about the power of nutrition for healing health, for healing the body if it was diseased, I just stuck it in my head. And by the end of pharmacy school, I'm thinking, you know what? I got to rethink my, I got to rethink my, uh, my whole approach to how this health business is done. Anyway, one of the things we learned in pharmacy school is about the ketogenic diet. That's an anti-seizure protocol. The ketogenic diet was the way to treat seizures until Dilantin came out. The drug Dilantin came out around the 1930s, the 1930s somewhere, 1936 or so, or 37. Dilantin came out, and all of a sudden, the ketogenic diet was relegated to the, the dustbin of, of health and wellness and non-pharmaceutical history. But it worked. It still works. They still use the ketogenic diet, and what's, when Dilantin and Tegretol and, and the other anti-seizure medicines don't work, they still use the ketogenic diet. That, that tells you something right there. The ketogenic diet, this amazing way of eating, is the single most important way to ingest food if you're interested in any brain health issues. And I'm talking Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, I'm talking autism and schizophrenia, and I'm talking seizure disorders. And that is the, the mystery behind why the ketogenic diet, high fat, moderate protein, very low carb diet works for the brain. Understanding that mechanism is so darn important if we are going to understand health. It, is, it sums up the bright side philosophy of health and wellness and healing in a nutshell, just by understanding its mechanism. What is the mechanism? It calms the body down. The ketogenic diet calms the body down. It allows the body to get energy without sugar. Sugar is hot. The body doesn't like hot. The ketogenic diet allows the body to get energy without having to have heat, without having to have a lot of chemistry. And this is, what, this is why, in my opinion, it is the most powerful and effective way to eat if you're going to increase your longevity, if you're going to reduce inflammation, if you're going to lower your blood sugar, if you're going to lose weight, if you're going to improve mental health and, and cognitive functioning, and, and a bonus if you're going to enhance your athletic performance. So hopefully by this point, you know that I'm, this is, I'm a fan of the ketogenic diet. Now, I shouldn't say the, the ketogenic diet is a little extreme as it is because the ketogenic diet is a seizure diet, anti-seizure diet. So it's a medicinal thing. So the real true ketogenic diet is extreme. So I call the bright side way of eating that I've been talking about now for 30 years, the modified ketogenic diet. The real ketogenic diet, the true ketogenic diet as we, as we know it today, got, really got going in the mid 19th century. So, actually, 1860s or so. That's when the ketogenic diet got going. We knew about the ideas of fasting, about the, the healing power of fasting for a long time. And the ketogenic diet is actually a fasting diet in the sense that it mimics, it imitates the chemistry of fasting. We can talk about that here in a second. But anyway, the ketogenic diet got going somewhere in the mid to 19th century we, when, when explorers who were going up to the Arctic they were, uh, they were going, that was the last great frontier was, was the Arctic, the, the European continent, the Asian continent. You know, most of the world had been explored except for the Arctic. And so they started going up to the Arctic and they ran into these Eskimos. And the Eskimos were living on reindeer meat and whale blubber. And they were like, how the heck is this happening? Because we were just starting to think, this was, the, the, this was the time in American history when grains were getting going, cereals were getting going. Everybody was all up on, hip to carbs. Kellogg had, had um, Kellogg of Kellogg's cereal fame, had his famous sanitarium, his health, his health spa in Battle Creek, Michigan. And he was feeding everybody carbs and grains and talking about how important carbs and grains were. And then these scientists come back from the Arctic and they're talking about Eskimos just eating 
just eating whale blubber and reindeer and living great. All right, we got more to say here when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back after this. All right, we are back on The Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com and also benfuchsarchives.com. You can purchase products off of uh, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and at criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, and ask them about joining the Brightside Ben team. You can also purchase Truth Skin Health products, our retinol 5% gel, and Truth Serum and Truth Balm and Truth Omega-6 healing cream only made with the good stuff, only made with the stuff your skin needs. Never anything your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of my true skin health products. And go to your medicine cabinet now and look at your favorite skincare products and think about the fact that they're, they're 80 to 90, even up to 95% H2O from your tap. And that's what you're paying for. Not to mention the silicon and the oil and the wax and the emulsifiers and the surfactants and the, and the preservatives and the fragrance. I'm speaking of preservatives, you know what? I, that can't be good, all right? Rubbing preservatives on your skin can't be good. I know that there's never been anything proven, but it's just not good. Preservatives are awful. I used to wear masks when I had to, when I worked with preservatives in, uh, in big pails, powders of it, I would wear a mask when I had to dig into that stuff. That stuff is toxic beyond belief. Preservatives, yes. Preservatives are toxic beyond belief. Yes. Here's the deal. You only use 0.1% or 0.2% or maybe 0.5 or 1% of a preservative. You use very small amounts of it, but who cares? You're rubbing it on your skin with an emulsifier, with transdermal penetration. There's no way that can be good for you. Anyway, and same with preserve, uh, uh, fragrances and perfumes. So you can check out all our True Skin Health products with no silicon, oil, wax, emulsifier, surfactants, preservatives, or fragrance at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And make sure you head over to brightsidehealth.com and take a look and purchase our bone broth protein made with high hyaluronic acid and, and uh, not to mention uh, all the amino acids that are critical for joint and connective tissue building. And we'll be talking to Jordan Rubin about that in a couple of days. So the ketogenic diet. Ketogenic diet really got, well, well, the ketogenic diet, we started to understand about it when Arctic explorers started coming back from, from their uh, journeys, with the, uh, living with the Eskimos and, and observing them, and noticed that they were doing just fine without any fruits, without any vegetables, without any grains, without any carbs. And this was right during the time when um, Americans were all carb-obsessed, were getting carb-obsessed, cereal-obsessed, turn of the same, same time period, pretty much. And these explorers started coming back, and the doctor was like, no way, that cannot be. You can't possibly live without fruits. You can't possibly live without vegetables. You can't possibly live without, uh, without grains and without carbs. One of the early advocates of this Eskimo diet was a guy named Schwatka, Frederick Schwatka. He was a U.S. Army surgeon. He was part of an expedition that traveled into the Arctic. To, uh, there was a there was a uh, there was a previous expedition called the Franklin Expedition. Everybody died, and they wanted to know what the hell happened to the Franklin Expedition. So all these people started coming up to do research, and the government wanted to know. Anyway, Schwatka uh, Schwatka keeps a diary. Right, he goes up to the Arctic. He's got a he has a uh, he has Eskimo guides with him, and he keeps a diary and he records his es his observations. And one of his observations is his Eskimos that he's ha hanging out with his guides. Uh, he says something very interesting. He says, when they started, when they left, uh, this is in his diary, when they left the United States for the Arctic, they had their food and they ate all their food and the Eskimos ate the same food as everybody else, the Inuit, I guess, I think this is the appropriate name. The Inuit ate the same food as everybody else. And uh, everything was fine. But then when they ran out of food, the Inuit started to, to hunt. They started to eat their native food. When they got to the Arctic, they ran out of their regular food and they had to go hunt. And so Dr. Schwaka says something very interesting. He says, the first couple of days or the first couple of weeks that uh, our guides are hunting and eating reindeer meat and whale blubber and eating their native Eskimo food, the first couple of weeks they have very low energy. They can't really do too much. But then after two weeks, 
They've got all of this energy. For the first few weeks, they have no energy. But then after that, they got an incredible amount of energy. After a few weeks of eating reindeer meat and blubber, they became extremely, extremely vital. They had more endurance. And all they were eating was reindeer meat and, and whale blubber. What was interesting is that Schwatka noticed that it took a while for this adjustment to occur. Today we call that the Schwatka imperative. And that is that you have, it takes a while for ketosis to kick in, for ketogenesis, for the ketogenic diet to kick in. If you're eating, if you decide you're going to go ketogenic to lose weight, which is really one of the best things that the ketogenic diet does, among other things, of course, but you could lose weight very effectively with it, but it takes a couple of weeks to adjust. Schwatka was describing what's called keto adaptation. And keto adaptation takes a couple of weeks. Sometimes people feel, they call this the keto flu. They'll actually feel a little yucky when they first start the ketogenic diet as their body's adjusting. This is the secret right here. You want your body to adjust to the fat. You want your body to be a fat burner. We are not fat burners. Witness the obesity epidemic. The obesity epidemic is a direct result of us being sugar burners and not fat burners. So we don't burn our fat, we store our fat. Carbs make you store fat. Ketosis makes you burn fat. Do you want to be a fat burner or do you want to be a sugar burner? Bonus, the body prefers to use fats. It's le it requires less heat, less processing to use fats for energy. Ketones are super high energy and don't require anywhere near the processing that sugars do. There's another guy, another scientist, a historian, this guy, this is really interesting. So this, this historian, he's studying and living with the Inuit. This is uh, probably 1900, somewhere around the early, early 20th century. And uh, he's living with the Inuit, and he's eating what they eat. He eats just whale blubber and reindeer. And he doesn't eat any, and fish probably. He doesn't eat any, uh, any grains, any carbs, any uh, fruits, any vegetables for a year and a half. And he does fine. He writes about it. He comes back and he tells everybody. And uh, doctors, everybody thought he was a whack job. He was, it, it, this is what scientists do. When somebody comes up with something that flies in the face of the common knowledge, the common wisdom, it, they get laughed at. The ketogenic diet, Dr. Atkins was one of the first guys to really get this thing going in the 1970s, 1980s. They laughed at him. The ketogenic, uh, the ketogenic diet is just another in a, uh, example in a long list of, of biochemically logical and coherent and effective strategies that the mainstream laughs at. You can, the list is almost endless of what the mainstream laughs at and considers to be marginal and considers to be a, a quackery. Nutritional supplementation not too long ago was considered quackery. Just now, it's, get, it's starting to uh, get credibility because it works. So anyway, this guy, uh, Stephenson, his name is, ketogenic, he, he, goes, he comes back and, uh, and tells people about what he, it was basically the ketogenic diet, and uh, they laugh at him. So to prove his claim, they do an experiment. They, they lock him up in a hospital, and they monitor him for a year and a half. Not just any hospital, Bellevue Insane Asylum, by the way. And uh, they monitor him. They watch what he's doing. And they feed him the most incredible amounts of fat, the most incredible amounts of protein, the most incredible amounts of carbon. Does Stephenson convulse? Does he get fatigued and weak? Well, uh, no, he doesn't. Long story short, we'll finish up when we come back. We'll finish up tomorrow. We've got lots more to say about the ketogenic diet. I want to get to your calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We are back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to leverage the ketogenic diet, I can think of no better way than to use bone broth protein. And if you have a connective tissue health, health issue and many, many, many of our breakdown diseases are degenerative diseases, if not all degenerative diseases involve connective tissue, there's no better protein going than bone broth protein. As you know, I've been talking about bone broth for years. If you don't want to carry around a, a thermos of bone broth or if you uh, don't have time to make bone broth, and a lot of people don't have time to make bone broth, you can get bone broth protein from brightsidehealth.com. Brightsidehealth.com. It's packed with the amino acids that are in bone broth, not to mention 
glucosamine and hyaluronic acid and all that wonderful cartilaginous substance that is so important for building connective tissue in the immune system. By the way, you know glucosamine is one of the all-time great underappreciated strategies for mimicking the low-carb diet. Yes, glucosamine, and for that matter, glutamine. So you can use your bone broth protein, which is rich in glutamine and rich in glucosamine, as part of a ketogenic diet protocol, and you can find out all about it at brightsidehealth.com. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's take our first phone call of the morning and go to Pam. Good morning, Pam. What's going on? Hi, good morning, Ben. I'm hey. calling about my son, who's 39. He's been very physically fit and active his whole life. A Navy submariner for 20 years, okay. 19 and a half, actually. Okay. Um, recently diagnosed with hokum cardiomyopathy, an unknown DNA type. No, also, no, 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 what, unknown DNA type nonsense. Okay. He's got cardiomyopathy. He's got a heart problem. Is it an enlarged heart, right? Correct. Okay. So here's the deal. The heart is working really hard when it's enlarged. It doesn't just get enlarged. Yes, the DNA is involved and genetics are involved because genetics are involved in everything. But the question is, why is his heart working so hard? It's like a muscle. When you when you go to the gym and lift weights, your your muscles get bigger. So if your heart's working really hard, that means that means it's it's working. I'm sorry. If your heart's getting bigger, that means it's working hard. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. We got to calm everything down. Calm everything down. What's his height to weight? Six foot three. 210 pounds. Is he like all lean and mean and muscly? I'd say yes. No okay. Way. This happens. This happens to athletes a lot. So we got to figure out what is his heart working so hard? About? And the, to do it really effectively, you got to look for other symptoms. Okay. And they're going to be very subtle, but he's got to find them. If you just want to do things, you know, shotgun approach, which might not be a bad idea to do, you want to start supporting the heart right away. Ketones, by the way, I don't know if you've heard me t heard the program in the last few days or weeks or even months. We've been talking about ketones. The heart loves ketones. So going low carb, high, moderate protein, high fat can help them. Also using cardiac or heart uh, and circulatory system supplements can help. The B vitamins, of course, are extremely important for the heart. Omega fatty acids are extremely important for the heart. There's a really cool uh, amino acid kind of substance called carnitine. It's not really an amino acid, I don't think, but it's similar. Uh, carnitine is a, uh, a wonderful heart uh, a heart health supplement. It helps the heart get fueled. So getting, getting a little carnitine might not be a bad idea, uh, a gram or two of that a day. And then uh, let's see here, what else? Magnesium, super duper important, and all the, all the essential fatty acids, but particularly uh, omega-3s threes, uh, omega threes I would be using for the neurology aspect of the heart. And then if he has anything clogging up his blood vessels, if his, blood vessel, if his heart's working against pressure in the blood vessels, that's gonna be another strategy. And you know that by digestive health issues, uh, if he's got any gut problems, if he's got bloating or discomfort after he eats anything, you may not know that, but that's something that he wants to look at. Uh, oxygenation is, of course, that's the heart, that's the main role of the circulatory, one of the main roles. The, the most important role of the circulatory system is to deliver oxygen and to remove acids and carbon dioxide. So make sure he's breathing correctly. Slow, deep breathing. Extremely, extremely important for helping improve heart health. There's so many more things you could do. Uh, there's, uh, uh, in addition to magnesium, also zinc is very important for the heart and selenium is very important for the heart. Vitamin A is very important for the heart. So get them on the Healthy Start Pack, work on the digestive system and then the targeted supplements that we just talked about and then also the ketogenic diet might be something else he wants to think about. Okay, anything else? Awesome. Uh, would you want him uh, to follow through with taking metoprolol and Lipitor? That's the stupidest. Is that what they're giving this young guy? Yes, that's what they want him to take. I'm glad. Right, he they has take this to. this Navy SEAL or Submariner, which is super yeah. cool, by the way. He's a SEAL, right? Uh, no, just a Navy diver. Oh, that's still super cool stuff. All right, it takes Thanks. this guy in the prime of his life. He's a strapping young man. Of what did you say? How old is he? 
39. 39, strapping young, not exactly a young man, but strapping anyway. And they're going to drug him with two horrible drugs, Lipitor not being anywhere near as bad as the beta blocker, metoprolol, which is commonly dispensed. This is terrible, absolutely terrible. But what's even more terrible is if your son participates. It's terrible that they're doing it, but if your son complies with it, that's double terrible. My opinion, my opinion only. And don't forget oh, vitamin C, also extremely important for the heart. The healthy start pack will get him his vitamin C. And uh, if you want to do one more thing, vitamin E, 400 IU a day. There's so many things, really, but that's a great start for you. Okay? Okay. And I forgot to mention sleep apnea. Maybe that's that. all part of the Hey, that's what I'm telling you. It's all part of the same picture. He's not getting oxygenated. It's all part of the deal here. There's probably other things there, too, Pamela. You got to find okay. all the symptoms and collect them. You got to collect the dots before you can connect the dots. So you got to get as many symptoms as you can. I'm always asking people for symptoms, and and I, some we don't think of things as symptoms because we're so used to plugging ahead. Especially if he's a Navy diver, we're so used to plugging ahead. Well, we just put our symptoms on the back burner, but they tell us a story. Our symptoms are our body talking to us. It's telling us the story of their life. Our body is telling us the story of its life via the symptoms. And it's really important to find them. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You, it's, people don't just have an enlarged heart. All right? Uh, ben, they say we need more Davids. And more. I say we need more Bens. God bless you and for your Praise show. God. Thank you. That's beautiful. I appreciate that, Pamela. Have, have a great day. Okay, bye-bye. That was kind. I appreciate that. All right, Amy in Denver, what's going on? Hi, I have an eight-year-old daughter yes. who is showing um, signs of developing type 1 diabetes. Specifically, she is now positive for GAD. Okay. And I'm wondering what to do to try to reverse that. Uh, what else does she have? Again, just like we were talking about the last gal, autoimmune diseases typically follow digestive issues, milk especially with type 1 diabetes. Is she a milk drinker? She is. Okay. I haven't noticed she... that she has any difficulty with milk, however. She you have not noticed. She has a stomach ache. <laughs> you have not noticed? No. It doesn't mean anything. I mean, okay. noticing is the, the best, way, best way to do it, but she could be having some kind of immune reaction and just not noticing it, or she may not be saying anything. You okay. know, so there, don't go by that uh, sure. if she's a kid. Go by uh, uh, the symptoms. Autoimmune diseases typically mean something's getting into the blood that's triggering the immune system. And now the immune system has somehow been activated against itself. Autoimmunity has a fascinating mechanism that is very rarely addressed, and that is toxicity in the blood that ultimately gets dumped in various organs, soft tissues like the pancreas and the thyroid. Can you hold on a minute, Amy? We've got a break. Sure. Thank okay. you. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. We are back on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Amy in Denver about type 1 diabetes. And, uh, well, diabetes in general is a blood sugar issue, as you know. So you, uh, keeping her uh, carbs down to a minimum or whatever she can get away with, whatever. You know, she's a kid. More protein means less carbs, just so you know. Okay? So uh, and kids especially are burning through protein. They're growing. So getting your kid more protein and, for that matter, more fat, good fat, is a great uh, uh, great low uh, uh, insulin reducing and, and blood sugar processing uh, kind blood sugar processing life strategy, if you will. So keeping her sugar down, protein and fat up, that's one thing. Uh, you can have her do a little glutamine supplementation. And then look for digestive problems, particularly food intolerances. What happens when the body starts to break down at the, at the intestinal level over the course of years of uh, the wrong kinds of foods, you get little leaks, leaky gut syndrome, this is called. And everybody who's got a long-term degenerative health crisis, including autoimmunity, has got at least some degree of leaky gut. It's just how the body breaks down via this triangle of disease model we talk about. So the, the gut becomes permeable to stuff that gets into the blood. The blood's on the other side of the gut. Eventually the blood starts to become toxic and sludgy and the immune system gets activated in the blood. And these little tiny particles called circulating immune complexes or CICs, which are basically little bubbles of protective immune cells and food particles or little, little blobs, they get dumped out into the various structures, soft tissues of the body, and that includes the pancreas. So anytime there's an 
autoimmune disease, you've got these circulating immune complexes and you've got, and you've got uh, uh, de deposition in the soft tissue. That, well, that's a very uh, interesting but maybe complicated way of saying fix the gut. Look for food intolerances, use probiotics, get her on the nightly essence, use fermented foods if she'll do the sauerkraut and miso and tempeh and anything you do that's fermented. Use veggie juices, have her do a veggie juice every morning. You could throw a little beet in there to make it sweet for her, a little bit. Beets, by the way, are great for diabetics. Uh, uh, celery also, cucumber. Start off her day with bone broth protein instead of cereal and milk. Start off her day with, a, with uh, she may have a problem with whey protein. That's one of the neat advantages, by the way, the bone, bro bone broth protein. It, it doesn't have the same kind of uh, allergic or intolerance potential that whey does. Is this all making sense here, my dear? It is. Thank you couple, so much. Let me, let me tell you a couple more quickies here. Chromium and vanadium, that's the sweeties. That'll help her with her insulin. Selenium will help her with her insulin. And also a zinc will help her with sugar metabolism. And also, one last thing, the B vitamin, vitamin B3, niacin. So all the nutritional and health strategies we talked about will get her those, those nutrients. So you can, you can have her take a little extra on the side. Okay, Amy? So I had her on B vitamins, but they made her nauseous and she actually yeah. vomited. You got to do Is smaller there a amounts. Formulation? Okay. Yeah, the BTT. Have you had her on the BTT, Beyond Tangy? So I have tried the, B, the BTT before yeah. I give it to her. I try things. Too strong? It keeps me up at night. So I'm wondering would hey, it well, be possible to go down to like a quarter of a scoop? Yes, you don't need the whole scoop. Absolutely. Okay. That's, that's a misunderstanding on the BTT. Yes, the instructions say a scoop or two or three. Put a little in a water bottle to where you like the taste, sip on it. That's my opinion. Okay? okay? So okay. just sip on it all day and she'll love it. Make popsicles okay. with it. You know, make it a treat. Right. Make, I'm putting gelatin. Make a jello with it. All right. Got to go. We're, in, we're already in Denver, by the way, Amy. Um, I live in Littleton. I work in Denver. What do you do? I'm an attorney. Oh, nice. Have you heard, uh, have you, uh, you've heard this program before? Are you a regular listener? I am. I haven't had a chance to call in because oh, my nice. schedule and I don't get along. <laughs> well, okay. Well, good deal. I'm glad you called. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Robert in Texas. Welcome to the bright side. Good morning. Robert. Yeah. Robert. Hey, buddy. Hey. Yeah. I was asking about um, Adney. My daughter's 27 years old, but she's been stressed out the last, the last four months or so. I think the stress is going to me. I'm not sure, but Anyway, I wanted to ask you about it. You know, I'm having a hard time hearing you. I heard... Adney. Is that Robert? better? Is yeah, that speak better? up. Did you say asthma? Adney, like pimples on your face. Acne. Okay, gotcha. Okay. How old is your daughter? 27. And she's breaking out on her face? Yeah, she's stressed out, I think. Got well, that's not going to help her. That's not going to help her. Yeah. Uh, give me a quick, give me a quick thumbnail sketch of her body type. Is she lean or is she round and buxom or lean and mean? What's yeah, she's a uh, very solid person. She's okay, a... gotcha. I know what you're talking about. Okay, here's what you need to do. Okay, uh, number one, get her on zinc right away. Zinc, 50 zinc, milligrams. Okay. okay. Uh, the breakouts are the breakouts. Hang on one second, Robert. The breakouts are the forehead. Uh, yeah, on the face and the cheek and the forehead, both. You know what the T-zone is? The right. T-zone, where you're, there's something called a T-zone, where the forehead makes, a, and the forehead in the middle of your face make a T? Yeah. That's called the T-zone. Does, uh, okay. does the T, are, the, are they concentrated in the T-zone, or are they concentrated on the cheek? That's a big, major uh, distinction. It looks like it's more on her cheek than okay. on her forehead there. Okay, then that's going to be a little bit different. All right, for everybody listening, you want to distinguish breakouts on the T-zone from breakouts on the cheek. It's a major distinction. Why? Because the T-zone is about oil which is about zinc and testosterone and, and sugar and blood sugar, uh, carbohydrate metabolism. Uh, and the cheek is about the digestion. Now there's overlap on both, certainly, but that's just a, a rough distinction that you wanna make. The cheek is where you have a lot of immunity. And that means defensiveness, defensive reactions. That's what rosacea is about, by the way. So what you gotta do, Robert, is you gotta look for foods and you gotta support the digestive system. She may be breaking out in response to gluten or dairy or some other, uh, some other substance that are in plants, some problem processing sugar. You gotta work on the digestive system. Get her on the nightly essence, have her watching her foods and look for foods that are spiking her, uh, her uh, making her condition worse or causing digestive problems. And then also get her on the healthy start pack. Uh, you may want to throw in some of the ultimate enzymes after meals. 
Use the Fucoid Z capsules, nine a day, three in the morning, three in the afternoon, three at night. Same with the nightly essence, three in the morning, three in the afternoon, and three at night. Do the whole digestive protocol that we talk about, and I cannot possibly overestimate the importance of making sure she's looking for problem foods and eliminating them. That alone can make a huge difference. And they could be nuts and seeds and, and uh, uh, peanuts and peanut butter and cashew butter and almond butter and and gluten and cereal and the list is re very very extensive of foods that will cause that condition okay robert okay all right ma'am okay. have a good day thanks thank for calling hope, god, hope we helped oh, god bless you my friend hope we helped you out let's go to uh mike in texas good morning mike what's up good morning good morning ben i appreciate your help uh, i've got a grandson he's about two and a half been diagnosed uh with dandy walker syndrome uh, dandy walker sure that's not that, yeah that's a that's a congenital issue you mean he just got diagnosed with it well it's been several months uh uh he just kind of passes out off and on he started with a you know uh, bumps on his heads but he doesn't have any you know disfigured head or okay um, is it was he breastfed no it's very very rare condition uh and for the listeners, it's a malformation of the brain, basically. The brain doesn't develop correctly. So a lot of things you're going to want to do here, okay? Now, they say it's congenital, uh, meaning it's from birth, but there's still lots of things that you can do this that will support the development of the body. Fats are extremely, extremely, extremely important, and the more sugar he's eating, the less able his body's going to be to, take, to, to use, utilize fats. Yes. So, so you got to go low sugar, and you got to get him on, make sure he's getting enough fatty foods, fish essential fatty acids, uh, eggs, dairy if he could do them. Now you have to check and make sure he can do dairy and eggs, but they're, they're wonderful fats for the brain uh, along with the essential fatty acids. And then substances that help him do, help him uh, utilize fats, vitamin E, selenium. Now he, how much does he weigh? Uh, probably 35. Like yeah, 30. You're going you're gonna to have to, it's going to be tricky because he's, you know, most doses aren't made for kids, so it's going to be tricky to get him these, get him on a supplement. Make sure he's doing a little bit of the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Make sure he's doing a capsule of the essential fatty acids, eating fish and avocado and coconut oil. And uh, I, I like going better more with foods for little kids, in addition, along with the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. So foods that contain these kinds of things, okay? So you're looking for foods that contain zinc and vitamin E and fats. That would be fishy fish foods, dairy, eggs, uh, high protein foods. Make sure he's getting enough fat. Make sure uh, uh, avocado and that's that kind of stuff. It, whatever he'll eat, that's fat. But go unprocessed with the fats and keep his sugar down. The easiest way to do that with a growing child is by getting more protein. And I would be doing a protein supplement if I were you. Uh, right. Whey protein or bone broth protein or a combination thereof. Whey and bone broth. Uh, and that's all the time we have for today. I, I apologize. I got a, we got a break, yeah. and uh, you can call back tomorrow. If I left you on hold, I apologize to you as well. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for listening sure. to The Bright Side. Please check out brightsidehealth.com. Take a look at our bone broth protein as well as truthtreatments.com for our truth skin health products. And, of course, you can sign up to join The Bright Side Ben team by calling 866-735-2470. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.